Hello friends! This video is about my most interesting summer projects at my secret log cabin camp. I worked on a lot of different projects at once, but the most prominent was my log cabin. I've been building it for a few years in this remote location near Ladaga Lake, and this season I finally got to the cabin's roof construction. Initially, I wanted to make a traditional Finnish birch bark roof, but due to time constraints, I had to toss the idea in favor of a sod roof. Not only does the sod roof look great, but it also provides heat insulation and it protects the wooden roof structure from UV light. I installed a polymer roofing underlayment under the sod to make sure the roof is leak free as well as to protect the roof members from moisture. To make the roofing job go faster, I made a simple ladder from long sticks. Here's a life hack. You can easily debark green sticks using a regular spoon. I used my wire clamper to secure the rungs on the ladder. This journey method is better than screws, nails or even bolts. This is my prototype being tested. If you want to learn more about my wire clamper, you can find the link below. It is a lot easier to climb the log cabin's roof using the makeshift ladder, especially when you have a heavy roll of wet sod on your shoulder. During the last summer, I managed to cover the roof with only one layer of sod. This year, I added a second layer to it. I tried different approaches of sod installation. I found each approach has its pros and cons. At least now, I know the roof will be able to withstand large snow caps in the winter, and in the summer it turns beautiful with lush grass, ferns and wild strawberry. I spent a lot of time and effort to make an original log cabin door. I wanted to make it from oak slabs, but couldn't find any falling oak trees, so I made it from a pine tree. I used three different methods to cut boards from a log, two of which I could recommend. After two years of experimentation, I found the best way to cut thick white boards from a falling tree. You can find a link to the board cutting video below. Note, the slabs were not cracked or twisted after drying. I think now I know how to dry wood in the outdoor setting. The steps to install the door were time-consuming but interesting tasks. I had to cut the log into thick slabs and transport them to the log cabin. Then I had to join the boards and plane the grooves on the sides, followed by reinforcing the door using horizontal dovetailed inserts. I secured the inserts with wooden dowels and hand planed the door to make it look nice. Only then did I finally install the door. Perhaps the most challenging task was to leave the upper door casing along with the whole roof to install the door with the built-in pin hinges. The halved logs used to deck the roof plus the weight of the log rafters and sod made my roof super heavy. I will be honest, I wasn't sure if I could do it by myself but the boldness of an experienced log cabin builder helped. Another time-consuming but important task was to make tools and jigs for the ongoing projects. For example, I made an improvised workbench from a falling pine tree. The workbench's legs are the tree's branches and roots. Then I made a canopy roof above the workbench. So, as far as I'm concerned, it is a woodworking shop. You could have seen this tarp in my other video, the tarp that was torn by a yeti. At least, this is what most people suggested under it. These improvised sawhorses were also made quickly. To save time, I used Y-shaped sticks for its legs. When you're in a rush, the functionality of a jig becomes the priority. You might have seen my makeshift vise used for chainsaw sharpening before. I recently combined it with this pneumatic wedge and got myself a nice adjustable bushcraft vise that I ended up using for different tasks this summer. Because of its fine adjustment feature, there is no risk to over-tightening something in with this device. 
you might have noticed an unusual round window in my log cabin. I like this untraditional look. If someone tries to break this window, they will be up for a surprise. I installed a half-inch 12mm plexiglass into the cabin's wall. I might even make a double window with a window hatch later. Some will probably think I'm building a fortress. Here's a question. How do you guys think I made this perfectly round porthole? This is a problem nobody quite solved since I have posted it on my Instagram. Talk to me in the comment section. I'd love to hear how you would do it. As you can see, there is still a lot of work that needs to be done inside. I still need to make bushcraft style furniture to match the log cabin's style. But first, I need to make and install the back door. I'm thinking about what design would be the best. Perhaps I will go with the French door for a change. I just need to figure out how to make it energy efficient. The front door turned out nicely. There are virtually no gaps around it. Once the log cabin is furnished inside, I'm planning to spend a few weeks in it in January, which means the log cabin needs a wood stove. I decided to build the cabin's heating system starting from a chimney. It will be an unusual wooden chimney made from two hollowed log halves that are connected with wire clamps. The chimney will not penetrate the roof, but will leave the house underground and will stand outside the cabin. This way, the roof will not have a potential weak point where it could leak, and the chimney won't take precious space inside the cabin. Such chimney design will also allow me to cold smoke fish underground as a bonus. Once done, I'm planning to make a stationary wood stove using rocks and clay. Meanwhile, I'm using my portable metal stove to cook food and to stay warm and dry, as it was rainy during my most stay this summer. You might think I spent most of my stay to build the log cabin. This is not entirely true. The most consuming project this summer was transporting and planting trees. During the last few years, I planted over 250 deciduous trees around my camp to replenish the ones that were knocked down by a severe storm. Most of the tree saplings are growing in three nurseries around my log cabin camp. I planted oligon birches, indigo trees, amur velvet trees, white acacia trees, German medlar trees, red bud cerces, scarlet red maple, Manchurian walnut trees and a few more names I either forgot or their tree saplings didn't make it to this day. To be precise, I spent at least seven full days at my tree nurseries this summer. This estimate doesn't include the time and effort of growing these saplings from seeds and transporting them to my camp by boat. However, I believe the final result is well worth the effort. I'm planning to make a separate video about how to grow trees from seeds and make money doing it. Last year, I made a pack frame from a few planks, bird cherry branches, two straps from my old backpack and some PET rope cut from a bottle. The time spent making it was well worth it. My pack frame saved me a lot of time and effort this season. I used it extensively to transport soil, heavy tools, my metal oven, tree saplings and even long heavy wooden slabs for my cabin doors construction. If you don't have one, I highly recommend you to consider obtaining or making a pack frame. One of this video's goals is to get your advice for what videos you would like me to make first. I have more than 20 projects that were filmed but are still awaiting to be edited and published. I know I won't have time to publish them all, which is why your opinion will help me to prioritize my efforts. I'm asking you to help me to make that choice, but in order to give me a valid recommendation, please finish watching this video. There are still a few good project spoilers ahead. When you do one activity for a while, it tends to get boring. Which is why I try to work on multiple projects at once. This summer I built another catamaran and a new composite kayak in addition to my old inflatable floaters slash 
Duffelback's catamaran. You probably have noticed that my new composite kayak has two latches, one on each end. This kayak can be used as is or can be included into a catamaran's frame. Last year I already made a catamaran, but didn't have much time to test it. Even though my plastic wrap kayak is fairly reliable and would work as is, I decided to reinforce it with a couple of extra ribs and stringers, as well as to reinforce the kayak's skin. I used synthetic fabric and polymer resin to mold a hard shell over its branch frame and plastic skin. Now the kayak won't leak even if you hit an underwater rock. I have extensively tested this new model kayak running over rocks and floating logs. The new shell didn't even budge. This is my first experience in molding fabric with polymer resin. The next kayak will be even better. I already have plans for it and the new model will be a part of a sailing catamaran. Here is an idea I have in mind. I want to make a watchtower that would be taller than the pine tree I used to get my phone reception in the woods. I need to get about 10 feet 3 meters above this pine for more stable phone reception. I'm going to use long sticks and wire clamps to build this makeshift phone tower. If you liked this video, perhaps you could share it with your friends. Let good people watch good videos. This is Maxi Gorov, St. Petersburg, Russia. And a final note, I only produce one or two videos max a month and if you don't want to miss new content like this, you can click on the bell reminder for notifications. I hope to see you back on Advocomakes.